Hey guys, what's going on? Jab here, and in today's video, we have some very important technical analysis to do on our favorite cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, because if you've been watching the hourly chart on Bitcoin for the last couple of days, you may have noticed a pattern that we're going to be discussing today, and that'd be none other than a head and shoulders pattern. As you can see here on this chart, Bitcoin looks like it has one shoulder, a head, and now overnight has formed another shoulder in what would effectively be a topping out bearish pattern. I've seen a lot of people discussing this in the comment section of yesterday's video, in the Discord servers that we run, and on the general interwebs over the last 24 hours or so. So I want to go ahead and weigh in what I think about this head and shoulders pattern because as you guys will know, we still have about a $200 tall CME futures gap down below $9,800. A lot of people are wondering, is this head and shoulders pattern going to crash Bitcoin $1,300, dollars $1,500? far enough to fill that futures gap. Guys, I've said in previous videos that I don't necessarily think the gap needs to be filled because I think people overhype gaps on the CME futures chart, but in this video we're going to discuss it anyway because I think a lot of you are wondering, is this head and shoulders pattern going to cause Bitcoin to fall quite that far? Remember, if we fall below $10,500, it might actually be putting the bull market that we're in in jeopardy. At least that's what some people would have you think. So guys, we're going to be discussing all of that and more in today's video, so make sure you watch until the end because I have something special I want to talk about towards the end of this video, specifically directed at you if you're newer in the market. Before we dive on in though, guys, I do want to mention the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy because as you guys know, we started the Bull Run 2020 coupon code and sale yesterday. If you're new to the channel, CT2A is the academy where I teach you guys everything I know about technical analysis. I've been working in these markets every single day for the last three years and I promise you, going through this course, if you're even so much as a, just a little bit new to cryptocurrency, is going to be worth its weight in gold. I've spent thousands of hours studying these markets, and pretty much everything I know I have put into this academy. So if you guys want to invest in your education so that you actually understand how to trade and profit in these markets, I highly encourage you to check us out at the link in the description down below. More on that at the end of the video, but for now though guys, without much further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Rocking the toxic Bitcoin maximalist mug this morning, guys. I really need to start my... Come on, focus. Focus. Ooh, that was perfect. Guys, I really need to start my own merch store because I want to sell stuff like that. Tell me in the comment section down below if you'd like to see some crypto gel and some general Bitcoin merch. I'm totally down to do that. You know what? That's not a bad idea. We might do that like later on in the beginning of next year. Anyway, let's get on to the chart. <laughs> this gap. Yeah, that one right there. This one is the one that everybody's been talking about. There has been a lot of conversation in the cryptocurrency space over the last couple of days about this $260 tall gap on the CME futures. As you guys may know, a little over a week ago, not last weekend, but the weekend before that, Bitcoin rallied very, very quickly. And of course, over the weekend, CME futures are not open because it's on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and they're heathens over there and think that the market only needs to be open half the time, when in fact, we go 24-7 here in crypto. A lot of people have been wondering, is Bitcoin going to fall that far, pull back that far, all the way down 12%, $1,300 to start filling that futures gap? And especially now that on the daily chart, we have what looks like, to be honest, a malformed, really strange looking head and shoulders pattern on Bitcoin. Are we going to pull back like that? Well, guys, as you know, Bitcoin has gone ahead and set some lower highs, but you will also have to take notice that Bitcoin has set some higher lows. Bitcoin is in kind of a strange looking consolidation pattern right now, actually with resistance right there and with support right here. These two trend lines are going to be converging on themselves pretty quickly, and I think we're about to see quite a bit of a market structure shift in the next couple of hours and may have even started before this video goes live. So take a peek at your chart. Remember, these videos take a couple hours to edit. But in general, guys, I think we're going to start deciding on a new direction here for Bitcoin in the next couple of days. We've been sitting up here just above $11,000 for almost a week now, and I think Bitcoin is primed and ready to re-decide which direction it's going to go. And before we go any farther, I want to make my opinion on this totally clear. I am playing devil's advocate in this video. I don't think Bitcoin's going to go down. I don't think Bitcoin's going to fill the CME futures gap, and I'm making that announcement right here. If I'm wrong, I will be the first to admit it, but the technicals and the fundamentals say that we're probably not going to do that. There's a chance, but here's why we're probably not going to. Even though Bitcoin has had a correction over the last couple of days, as we've talked about in previous videos, Bitcoin was in dire need of that correction. As you can see, we finally reset the TD sequential, and we went ahead and reset our RRSI down here to around 65, which is a much better place for that to be. Volume is still significantly higher than it has been over the last two months, so even if we do have a correction to the downside, 
that's going to one, bring more volume, two, bring more volatility, and three, bring more retail investor interest because don't you think all of the big news outlets that have been talking about Bitcoin in the last two weeks are going to talk about a big correction. That's going to drive people back into the market, bring more volume, volatility, liquidity, market capitalization, et cetera, back into the market and drive Bitcoin to the upside. Bitcoin is in an uptrend right now. So in fact, when it has a pullback, it's actually a good thing. We've talked about that in the 2016 and 17 bull market where Bitcoin would have 40% corrections during a bull market. This bull market is very new, so I don't really think we're going to pull back 40%, but I could definitely see us pulling back another five or six. Like I said, I don't think that's statistically likely to happen, but even if it were to happen, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But here's why I don't think Bitcoin is going to pull back down to $9,800 or whatever and fill the stupid gap that everybody thinks is important and it's really not. These two trend lines right here, this flat one and that downtrend. Guys, very simply, Bitcoin is in between two levels. We are in between our resistance up here and we're in between our support right there. Bitcoin is in another little chart sandwich with like, so it's like a BLT. It's, it's very tasty for profits because there's a lot of volatility right now. This downtrend is constituted by that high, that high, and that high. And don't forget, guys, that is a thousand day downtrend. This is not a small downtrend. In fact, it is the largest downtrend in the entire history of the cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin broke it two weeks ago, lest you have forgotten. Not only that, we have that aligning with the flat level of support at $10,500 constituted by all of these highs right here. On top of that, you look at the VPVR and you can see that we're sitting above tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of VPVR support. And if you take a look at Fibonacci retracement, you can see that there is some strong Fibonacci level. In fact, our golden pocket sitting at $10,000. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense for Bitcoin to fall below the golden pocket since we've already rallied above it. We talked about this a couple weeks ago about how it was going to be hard for Bitcoin to get above 10.5 because of the golden pocket here. But if we did manage to do that, Bitcoin was going to have some very strong foundational support. Well, are we just forgetting that this 65% retracement level is exactly at 10.5? We can't do that. That would be absolutely silly of us. It's a very strong level of support, even if we draw from up here. Even looking at our moving averages, guys, Bitcoin's 20 EMA has now jumped all the way up here, sitting at 10.5. So it just wouldn't make sense for Bitcoin to pull back below $10,500, let alone pull below $10,000, let alone pull all the way back to fill the CME futures gap. So is the head and shoulders pattern going to lead to more downtrend on Bitcoin? Possibly. And in fact, I could see Bitcoin pulling back to $10,500. I want to clarify what I said earlier. I don't think Bitcoin is going back to fill the CME futures gap. But there's definitely a possibility that we pull back to 10.5. That's exactly what we said yesterday. We are still in a decision phase for Bitcoin right now. Sometimes Bitcoin's in a clear trend, sometimes it's not. Right now, Bitcoin's not in a clear trend. We are deciding, are we going to pull back to 10.5 and bounce and rally? Or are we just going to rally from where we are right now? That's really the question we have before us. Those two options, what Bitcoin does, we're going to find out. But here's what you need to know. Both are possible. Both have strong technical arguments, a pullback 10.5 and then rally or a rally from here. So you need to be prepared for both of them. When you're looking at a trading strategy, you want to make sure that you have a trade setup and a plan for both possible outcomes of what the market does. If Bitcoin rallies from here, you need to be ready for that. If Bitcoin pulls back to 10.5 and bounces, you need to be ready for that. So I want to make sure that the attention that you guys have is being put in the right place right now. Yes, there's a head and shoulders pattern. Yes, that does technically indicate that there's going to be a bit of downtrend. But remember, that that head and shoulders pattern does not exist in a vacuum. We've just broken out in the biggest way that we've seen in at very least a year on Bitcoin, if not a lot longer. Why would the rally end now with a pullback to $6,500 to fill a stupid CME futures gap that, quite frankly, I've made the argument before, is almost completely meaningless? Why would Bitcoin do that just because of a CME futures gap and a head and shoulders pattern when everything else is bullish? I, I see no answer to that. So guys, I want your opinion on that in the comment section down below. Do you think Bitcoin's going to pull back to 10.5 and bounce? Or do you think Bitcoin's just going to rally from here? Or am I drawing a false dichotomy? Is there a third option that I'm not seeing? Do you actually think that Bitcoin's going to pull back and fill the CME futures gap? Love to hear your take on that in the comment section down below. One thing I want to talk about, though, is specifically directed at people that are newer to the space. E or even if you've been here for a while... But for some reason, you're kind of losing faith in Bitcoin. It's easy, even during times where Bitcoin is rallying, to wonder if you have what it takes to actually become a profitable trader, to actually become someone that can make a lot of money in these markets. First of all, before I even get into the thought process I want to go into, I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. This friend and I went to high school together. We never really knew each other all that well in high school, but for the little bit that I was in college, we hung out a little bit. We used to go to the gym together. And he kind of followed in my footsteps and started investing in the stock market. He works a W-2 job for probably around minimum wage, and he started saving all of that money and investing it in stocks. 
He ended up investing about $2,500, worked every single day. This guy had the hustle and the grind, turned $2,500 into $13,700. You know how old he is? He's 17. First of all, first point, age does not matter in trading. I don't care if you're 16. I don't care if you're 15. I don't care if you're 65. I don't care if you're 80. I don't care if you're 105. You can make it in cryptocurrency. He did. I did. A lot of people did. If you're watching this video and you're one of the people that is wildly profitable and you used to think that it wasn't possible, tell them in the comment section down below that all you need to have is faith and dedication and not leave the space too early. Have you ever seen that picture of the guy and he's mining and he's like this close to hitting diamond and then he just walks away, but there's the guy on top and he keeps going and hits it? That's what you're doing if you leave too early. So before I even get into the thought process, make sure you realize that this is possible. I think a lot of people that get into cryptocurrency or entrepreneurship, because trading cryptocurrency is a form of entrepreneurship, they doubt whether or not it's even possible. Well, if there are other people doing it successfully and you're not doing it, it's not that it's not possible. It's that you're not good enough yet. So keep working on yourself. But to further that point, when I was first getting into starting this YouTube channel and into entrepreneurship, I, I remember I used to just sit around and watch videos all day long, literally like eight, 10 hours a day, every day for months on end. I literally, I, I kid you not when I watched thousands of hours of content. There's 168 hours in a week. There's 8,760 hours in a year. I have spent thousands of hours watching videos on entrepreneurship and cryptocurrency. And the reason I did that is because now I have a bank of wisdom that I'm able to draw on. And that's what you guys see when you compliment me on that. I remember one video I was watching from Grant Cardone. A lot of people have mixed opinions on Grant. I don't really care, but I do remember watching this video on him and he was talking about why he bought his jet. Dude's a billionaire and he went ahead and bought a uh, Gulfstream G550 like $50 million plane, right? And I remember him sitting in the plane telling the story of how he bought the plane. And he was, t he was talking about who he takes advice from. And he was going around before he bought the plane and he was asking everybody, hey, is it a good idea? Should I buy this plane? He was getting everybody's console. And he, t and he said in his video that everyone that was behind him in business that was not on the same level that he was, and believe me, I'm going to tie this back into what I was saying, Everyone that was behind him in business said, no, it's a bad idea. Don't spend 50 freaking million dollars on a plane. You don't need that. Just be conservative. Don't go all out. Don't expand. That's dumb. Don't waste your money. But then he said he has one friend who's a billionaire already, and he wasn't a billionaire at the time. And this billionaire friend said, yes, buy the plane. Great use of your money. Your time's very valuable considering you run all these companies and you need to be able to skip the lines and TSA and everything because you travel all over the world for your real estate business. So then Grant's at a bit of a dilemma. Do I go ahead and buy the plane because the billionaire said I should? Or do I be more conservative because people that are not on my same level say I shouldn't? Well, obviously, in that situation, you might think, okay, yeah, listen to the dude who's been and is where you want to go. Well, I remembered him saying that because when I was thinking about moving into this office, which is a very big financial step for our company, I went around and I was asking a lot of different people's counsel because at the end of the day, I am 19 years old and I'm signing a six, basically a six figure financial commitment. And I went around, I was asking people like my father, my banker, some family, just a bunch of different people. And some people thought it was a bad idea. Some people thought, okay, this is a terrible idea. You shouldn't spend your money. Be more conservative. You can't afford that. You're 19. Slow down. And then some of them said, okay, well, when you explain it to me, it makes sense. Sure. Fine. I guess that, okay, cool. But when I was going around, I could have gotten discouraged and I could have stopped us from moving forward, which so far has been the best decision I've ever made financially. But I remember back to that video from two years ago when I saw, I have no idea what video it is, but I remember hearing Grant say that. And I remembered him saying that. And I also remember him because he made the video over a year after he bought the plane saying that it was one of the best decisions he ever made because he listened to the person who was ahead of him. So I thought to myself, what would the person that's five years ahead of me in my own business say to me about renting the office space that we're moving into? And I decided that they would say, that's a great idea. You got to move forward with your company. And I did it. And it's been a great decision so far. So tying that back into what I was saying earlier, I've been where you are if you're newer to cryptocurrency. And I want you to question yourself. When you're deciding whether or not cryptocurrency is something that you want to invest your money and time into, who are you listening to? Are you listening to someone like me who's been in the space for three years? Are you listening to someone like my friend who's been in the in stock trading for, for a little over a year, making a lot of money? Are you going to listen to the people, not the gurus, not the people that are trying to sell you 4,000% tomorrow, not the, tr not the kind of people who are saying, follow my hacker on Instagram down in the comment section. Believe me, we're trying to police that crap. Are you going to listen to the people that actually know what they're talking about, who have been there, done that, got the postcard, made their money, and they're happy about it? 
or are you going to listen to your friends and family who have no idea what they're talking about saying it's stupid for you to get into this? Are you going to listen to the doubters or are you going to listen to the people who are cheering you on saying they've been there, they've done this, and it's a good idea, you just need to commit to it? Who are you going to listen to? Because I know that I could have listened to people saying, Jeb, it's a bad idea to move into the office, be more conservative, keep your cards close to your chest, don't expand, be happy with what you have, or I can listen to my own conscience and know that I'm making the right decision. So what decision are you making in cryptocurrency? Are you deciding that you're going to make this work because other people have, because it's absolutely possible that you can, or are you going to walk and miss out? It's really that simple. That's the whole point of what I just said. That's why I just spent seven minutes talking about that because I know that it would have been so easy for me to quit crypto in the first year when I wasn't making a penny, when I sucked at trading. I know it would have been easy. I didn't have a choice. You have the luxury of having a choice more than likely. What choice are you going to make? What choice would you wish you had have made on your deathbed? It's really that simple. So guys, that's the point I want to make with this video. Sure, the technical analysis is important, but hopefully you took something more away from this video than just that. I always want to give you guys technical analysis because that's technically what I'm here for, but I also want to make sure I'm enriching your lives and making sure that I'm guiding you guys in the direction because there's a lot more to being profitable in trading than just knowing how to read the markets. That being said, reading markets and technical analysis is obviously very, very important. If you want to be a crack programmer, then yeah, you need the mentality to get there, but you also need to know how to like code. And in the same way, you guys do need to know how to do technical analysis. And guys, it's because of that and it's because of the mission statement of this channel, which is to help as many of you guys get to profitability as possible. It is because of that that we created the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. I've been in this space for over three years now. I work in these markets every single day and everything I know I try and pour into CT2A so that you guys can get value out of it. Learn the market, expedite the process of getting to profitability so that you're actually able to have faith in the market because it's very hard to have faith in what you're doing if you're not seeing results and it takes time to see results. You have to have faith in the process, which is why I just went on a spiel about it. But if you want to learn these markets, I guarantee you it's going to be a lot easier doing so if you have something like CT2A to help you understand these markets. Learning technical analysis can be very confusing. Look, I did it the hard way. I learned it by just watching a bunch of videos. You know how long that took? Like eight hours every day for two years. Do the math, maybe five, two, three, four, five thousand hours. I have no idea, but it's in the thousands. Let's say I worked minimum wage for 2,000 hours. I would have made $16,000 with that, with those 2,000 hours. You can spend $259 on CT2A and get all of that and be done in two weeks instead of spending two years. It's really that simple. So if you want a shortcut and you want to actually understand what you're doing in technical analysis, if you're new here, even if you're not new here, it's a great resource to have. Link's in the description down below. There are 2,100 students in the academy. You can join our free Discord server down below and ask what they have to say about it. But guys, that's really the end of it. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know if you want to hear more stuff like what I just talked about in the description, in the comment section down below. You guys don't have access to the description. If you did, we've made a very big, very, very big mistake on our security. <laughs> anyway, guys, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. Before I go, though, I really do just humbly want to thank you guys. We're about to hit 50,000 subscribers. And that's insane. And in the same way as learning technical analysis requires faith, it took a lot of faith in this channel for it to, for it to happen. First nine months, I didn't make a penny, but I worked on it every day. And if you want to do the same, CT2A is a great place to do it, but you're going to have to have faith. You're going to have to have diligence. You're going to have to have dedication. And you can't walk after six months because I can almost guarantee you, you're still not going to be seeing results in six months. Most people won't tell you that, but I'm here to be honest with you. It's going to take time, but if you have the faith, it'll pay off. It's really that simple. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Like I said, as always, if you did, consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below. But for now, though, guys, that is going to have to do it for today's video. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.